your time. All right, I think we are live now. Mm -hmm. Um, we live. Um, let me okay. Check. All oh. right. Aoud bilang the Shaitan Rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum, rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good night, everybody. Thank you guys for tuning in. It's been a while since Bambar has done a live. <laughs> so I do appreciate everybody for tuning in. Please share this live. I'm going to give you guys a few seconds to share this live. Share it to everybody in your network, inshallah. My name is Sister Muktara, and I am the founder of Bambar, which is Black American Muslims, born and raised, alhamdulillah. And this platform is for those who uh, were Black and American, born and raised in Islam. Um, and today is being about highlights, <clears throat> I mean, spotlight, I'm sorry. And today is actually the first episode of this particular programming that we're doing. And basically this program is to highlight Bambar programs, initiatives, organizations, and businesses. So Alhamdulillah, um, we're excited about jump starting this inshallah. And today we have our special guest, Muslim Culture Con. We have three members here today. We are excited about this. Young Muslims doing a thing, mashallah. So today we have Sister Jada Ahmed. She is the founder. We have Brother Jamil Ninso. He is the marketing director, right? And we have Sister Aisha Rashid. She is the director of volunteer uh, of, yeah, services, alhamdulillah. So without further delay, <laughs> because this is a Bambar platform, um, I just want to get a little bit about your background. How did your parents uh, come into Islam? So we're going to start with Jada. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, first, I just want to say thank you. Shout out to Bambar for bringing us on. Alhamdulillah, I'm super excited to have this conversation and to, you know, get let the community know of who we are yeah. and what we do. So super excited, truly grateful to be the first um participants in regard to this program. So oh shout out to Bam Bar. Woo -woo. Um, <laughs> so a little bit about my history. Um, I'm going to be real short. Um, so yes, my name is Jada Ahmed. Um, I am a community organizer slash community builder. I like that's like my my slogan. But um the my parents. So basically um I am second generation Muslim. Um yes, I'm Dilah. And um, how, well, how my parents came into Islam, um, my father, it was during the time of around Nation of Islam, um, during that time. And he always tells me this story. <laughs> his cousin, his cousin was in the Nation of Islam. But um, what happened was, um, this was during the transition of when Iman Warfi Muhammad was coming, well, was the leader was becoming the leader of um, Islam in America. And it was, you know, what we were letting, well, our community was letting go of the nation of Islam. So during that time, my father found out about um, Iman Warfi Muhammad and he, you know, did a lot of research on Iman Warfi Muhammad and the community and everything. And so he just fell in love. He fell in love with just the religion and, you know, learned, studied, was at the library all the time. Um, always, you know, hanging around his cousin and all that. So yeah, he came into his mom and then here comes my mom. <laughs> she wasn't born Muslim, but my um, father um, brought her into Islam. And so how it went was that they were, at, they were working at the same hospital and my mom said, my dad approached her and she was like, oh, here they go with the bean pies and the, you know, my mom was like, all right, now you about the nation of Islam, me out, you know, what's up? So she was like, ah, she was like a little hesitant, like, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? What what you what what are you talking about? And so they had an actual conversation on the phone. And then, you know, my mom grew to love Islam more, you know, from my father. So she um came into Islam and so alhamdulillah, they been married for 32 years now. Um mm -hmm. and alhamdulillah, I was I was a part of that that product, part of that foundation. Um, my brother, we are, we are a 15 year gap. 
But um, my brother is Marcus Lambert. Um, some of you may know him, may not know him, but he's um, in New York um, currently with him and his wife and his family. But yeah, so that's a little bit about a history, a short summary of my family. Um, sure. I, you know, nice. religion, alhamdulillah. <laughs> nice. Alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. Thank you, Jada. <laughs> and you're from the A. You were born and raised in Atlanta, right? No, girl. So oh. I'm originally from Cincinnati, Ohio. Oh. Yes, okay. yes, yes. But I mean, you know, I'm a Atlantian now. You know, I've been in Atlanta for so long. So. Right. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, still, I'm originally from Cincinnati, Ohio, but I've been in Atlanta now for about 14 years. Um, mm -hmm. And we've been back and forth my whole life. So that's why I, I claim Atlanta. So, yeah. <laughs> You're official. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, Sister Aisha, what about you? All right, assalamu alaikum, everyone. Wa alaikum salam. And I would like to echo Jada. Thank you for having us on this platform. Um, so yes, my name is Aisha Rashid. I'm from Houston, Texas. So with my parents, um, I'm actually third generation. My mother's father, uh, he's from California, and he had been a part of the nation, Imam, um, Otis Kali Mara, I'm over here like trying to remember my grandfather's name. <laughs> um, and he actually, so he moved from California to um, El Paso and he established some of the first masjids in El Paso, Masajid in El Paso. Um, and so my mom was originally raised in, for the first two years of her life in the nation. And then, you know, they made the transition and everything, but both of her parents were Muslim when she was born. So she was born and raised Muslim. Uh, my father, on the other hand, some of you may know him, Imam Abdullah Rashid from Houston, Texas. Uh, he likes to let us know that even though he accepted Islam later in his life, that he also had exposure to the nation when he was younger. When, until about, I think, maybe like five or six years old, his mother was actually a part of the nation of Islam. So my um, my grandmother and her sisters were all part of the nation for a while. And it's kind of funny because even when I was born, you know, they were going, they would go to church and everything, but they still never ate pork. So <laughs> <laughs> anytime we went to their house, there was no pork allowed. Um, so yes, my dad, when he was 18 in the army, he told us that his mother sent him his first Quran and, uh, you know, alhamdulillah, that's when he accepted Islam. Um, and I was born, I was raised Muslim. So alhamdulillah. Mashallah, beautiful. Third generation in the house. I'm really live. All right, brother Jamil. Mashallah, you're oh. next. Assalamu alaikum. alaikum. I, I of course echo my my predecessors with the, like the thanks of, of being able to be here. Um, this question always throws me for a loop because I never know how to answer it. The reason being, um, quick background history lesson. Um, I'm originally from the island of Jamaica, and my great grandmother was brought as an indentured laborer from India to Jamaica. Um, so her family came as Muslims. She married a black Jamaican Christian. He was an elder in the Presbyterian Church. That's my great grandfather. So oh, sure. she was she was deaning. He was preaching. They raised five, you know, children, four boys, one girl. My grandmother being that girl, she grew up deaning, right? married a Christian, had my mom. My mom married a Christian, had me, but I was raised by my grandmother. So I grew up being in like, and I, like, I say like that because like, there's three of us, like three of us cousins who were born around the same time. And so my grandmother took it upon herself to like, give us all these like very Muslim names. So like, my name is actually Jamila Dean. There's Abdul Rahim, there's Kamal Dean, but we all go by like the first or last half of our name. So there's Rahim, Jamil, Kamal, you know? So that's, that's me, right? So, um, yeah, Jamil Ninsu, originally from the island of Jamaica, this little village known as Galena, right, outside of Port Maria. Um, alhamdulillah, I'm also very proud to say, like, my grandmother and her brothers were a part of that first group who built the first masjid in Jamaica. I have the receipts, because there's always this back and forth about, was it Masjid Hussein or Masjid Ar-Rahman in Spanish town? Masjid Ar-Rahman in Spanish town. Um, so, <laughs> you know, inshallah, if you guys are ever in Jamaica, definitely check out Masjid Ar-Rahman in Spanish town, because it's the first masjid in Jamaica. And again, you know, Jazakallah here for having us here. Mashallah. Big up, big up. Hey. <laughs> Inshallah, I plan to visit one day. 
Alhamdulillah. Thank you guys. Thank you. And we have our brother Bilal Hassan. He is actually our co-host for tonight. Assalamu alaikum, Imam Bilal. Wa alaikum assalam, everyone. Alhamdulillah. Grateful to be here. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for being here. All right. Let's get into it. Um, let's talk about Muslim Culture Con, right? I think the first time I heard about Muslim Culture Con was a few years ago, probably like at the beginning when you first got when you first started. Alhamdulillah. So tell our audience who who is Muslim Culture Con? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Um, so Muslim Culture Con, um, we are officially Alhamdulillah now a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Um, and I guess I'll tell, I want to, I'll share a little bit about the, the start of it, right? The backstory. Um, so it really started off, um, I don't know if anyone's familiar on the call, if you all are, anyone's watching familiar with the NYAA, it was, um, national, if I get it right, national young adult association. And this was during the time of Imam Muhammad and his leadership, um, when this establishment, when this associate association got started. And so a lot of people that were part of that association, you know, are now, you know, leaders, imams, business people, you know, however, marriages, whatever. So <laughs> one of the individuals that were part of that association, um, oh, he's a lot older now, but um, he actually hit me up and was like, look, there is nothing in our community for Muslim young adults. And so, you know, when I thought about it, I'm like, yeah, you're right. Like, you know, of course, like not knocking all the other organizations that are out there, but in regards to, you know, us and like in our community and like the man working with him community, I couldn't think of anything. So he was just like, look, I need you to gather your peers and we're going to have a conference, like call them now, get, get the people together. I'm like, what? Hold on. Hold on. I had to like, just think like who, what, well, how I'm going to do this, you know? So um, and it was also during the time of me just evolving as, you know, a community leader. So I decided to just hit up some of my peers that were like-minded, you know, that were passionate about just bringing the community together. And it started off like that. Like literally we got on a call, a Zoom call it was like, I think like eight of us. Um, Aisha was there <laughs> and it was a couple other people. And we literally was just like, where do we like where do we go like you know we we were planning we wanted to plan for a conference right but then when we thought about it we was like wait hold on did we don't we need more than just a conference like we need an actual like structure like an actual organization so we literally took a step back and was like all right let's really be strategic about this let's really plan out how we envision this organization you know let's really ha let's really make this sustainable um so we came together and like I said, we, we were very passionate too about how there was a lack of presence of young adults and youth in our own local communities. So we felt that if we put something together on a national standpoint and we bring young adults together on a national standpoint, we could be able to go back to our own local communities after meeting nationally and bring that same spirit and energy back to our local community. So that was really uh, one of the dr drives and passions that, you know, uh, brought us together in, in creating this organization. So yes, yeah, so alhamdulillah, I, I like to say we're like a continuation of the NYAA, you know, of just being a vehicle for Muslim young adults, um, being able to curate different I think Jada froze. Jada, are you there with us? I think, I think Jada's frozen. frozen. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Sister, Sister Aisha or Sister oh, Brother Jamil? She comes back. You want to pick up where Sister Jada yeah. left? What's the mission of Muslim Culture mm -hmm. Con? <laughs> um, so I do not have our official one pulled up, but... <laughs> <laughs> our goal is aimed at bringing t young adults Muslims together, um, mostly those who follow the leadership of Imam Warthi Muhammad, inshallah, creating spaces for us to come together uh, spiritually, um, you know, socially, uh, 
you know, as a community and inshallah, build, rebuild our communities in the ways that, you know, they had, that our, our poor fathers and mothers had, you know, the sure. community that they had, all the conferences that they used to go to that we hear about all the time. So inshallah, just rebuilding that. Alhamdulillah. Oh, back. <laughs> what made you want to join the team? Um, so actually I, I remember, so I was part of, I don't know if you guys have heard of Camp Khalil. Yes. So Camp Khalil, um, I was a team member by the, or a team leader. By the time they came to Houston, I was too old to actually participate in the camp. And that was the first time when I realized there's kind of a gap right there for like, you know, people to do things to be to be you know, like you're too old to do the things for the youth and you're you know they don't really have anything for the young adults um so and in my mansion we started our own young adult group back in 2018 and we actually had um we put on an event and we were able to bring a lot of the young adults who weren't as active back to um you know the mansion and they were active uh, unfortunately, it didn't really last that long because a lot of people got busy. You know, life happened. People were having kids and jobs and stuff. So then when I think it was my cousin Fatima, she's not on here right now, but she actually approached me with uh, the idea of Muslim Culture Con. I was like, oh, you know, at at that time, it wasn't called MCC. <laughs> but um, I was like, oh, this sounds like exactly what I need. So, you know, something to get back into it. And honestly, I did not realize the level of work it would take, but absolutely a lot. That's probably why we're still going strong. <laughs> um, I was like, oh yeah, I, I can yeah. just plan, like Jada said earlier, I can just plan, help plan a conference, you know. Yeah. Um, but alhamdulillah, we're trying to build a foundation that we can actually pass on to the young adults that will come after us because all of us are going to age out of, you know, we're not going to be young adults forever. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, just helping build something more sustainable. So that's how I came into it and uh, what really made me stay, you know, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I really love this initiative and I felt what you said about that, the gaps, right? Because there was a time where I used to go to the Sisters Conference in Maryland and once you turn 18, you go to, you know, you join the rest of the, the conference. And I'm like, I got to go with the Umis now, right? <laughs> there was nothing for people in my particular age, you know, bracket. So mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. is a beautiful initiative and it's necessary. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Brother Jam Jamil, tell us why you joined Muslim Culture Con. <laughs> Boy, so why did I join Muslim Culture Con? So I'm I'm here in South Florida. And I, it, it was interesting, right? Because I grew up in this, I grew up in a space where it was like, there were Muslims who culturally identified as the way I culturally identified, meaning like, and again, because like my great grandmother was Indian and we kind of had that Indian upbringing, there was like this Indo-Caribbean community, but they didn't look like me. So although we might've ate the same foods and, and done certain things the same way, certain issues weren't the same, but like in other spaces, it was the, it was the counter, right? Where like, Yes, we might look alike, but culturally we're very different, right? And I'll never forget um, the very first time I visited Masjid Al Ansar down in Miami with Imam Dr. Nasser Ahmed, and I I met this Jamaican sister who baked a bean pie and made sorrel, and I was like, you could be my aunt. I was like, I just I felt that sort of level of kinship, and it's funny because one of my best friends, I consider her my little sister, who's also named Jada. Um, she grew up in the worthy Muhammad community, right? You know, she's like third generation and all of that. And she would tell me about the community and I never put two and two together. Um, I got into watching the Juma Kutbas at the Atlanta Masjid. And I think one day I went on Instagram or Facebook and they made a post talking about MCC's virtual launch. And I was like, all right, cool. This is worthy Muhammad community, young adult. That's me. Like that's that's exactly like what I'm looking perfect for. That's fit. I, I, it's, it's a perfect fit. <laughs> and you know, Jada could tell you the rest of that story. But like from there, I was I was I was sold. I was like, this is exactly the thing that I'm looking for. And it's funny because three of our board mem our other board members are folks who are also from this like South Florida area who like I grew up with. You know, had Holika circles with the brothers. And so for like the four of us to find our way to MCC is like, like only by the will of Allah. And so like that, at least for speaking for me, I'm not gonna speak for them, but like that for me, that was like the 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 flame that like attracted me as the moth to MCC was that 
like want for community, that want for connection with like-minded young adult Muslims. Mashallah. I love it. So I know you guys have put on a few events. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the things that you guys have done so far? <laughs> Sound like um, I'm back online. The internet was trying to let me. <laughs> <laughs> don't kick off again. Um, but um, yeah. So I feel like we've been established now for two years. Um, but officially, like this last year, we like I said, we've been really, you know, trying to structurally get become organized and everything like that. Um, but in the midst of that, so far, what we've been doing um, and what we started off doing is thinking of just like collaborating with different um, other organizations. So our first initiative, our very first initiative um, was us partnering with A Time to Be Grateful, the Muslim Journal Conference. Um, and that was like literally our first in-person um, initiative. And so we really went to get off on the ground and really get people to know who we are and what, you know, you will be seeing inshallah in the future. So, you know, that was our first um, partnership. And alhamdulillah, it was a good turnout. Like um, the people, the alhamdulillah, the attendants, and then even in regards of just the feedback that we received um, back from doing those different events, um, partnering with Muslim Journal, because um, the thing about Muslim Journal, alhamdulillah, shout out to them. Um, I know that there's always been a lack of presence of young adults as well. So um, us coming in and being able to put on different um, programs for, you know, young adults to create that space, it really made a difference um, with just igniting, you know, uh, different, seeing different generations at the at Muslim Journals Conference. So um, alhamdulillah, it was, it was a good turnout. Um, like I said, the feedback was beautiful. People felt at home, felt welcomed. So like, you know, this was a beautiful community that, you know, we're establishing. And then from there, we kind of, um, because we're not like located, like we don't have like a physical building or anything. This is like right. a virtual type organization. Um, we felt that, look, we need to keep the momentum going. We don't want to lose, you know, our individuals, our people that, you know, support this initiative. So we yes. started doing um, community check-ins. We started doing virtual community check-ins. And so with the virtual community check-ins, this was a way to keep us bonded, keep us connected, but also talk about, like, let's discuss, like, let's talk about, you know, what's going on in our community. You know, let's have those discussions amongst each other in regards of, you know, what we may need to do in our community. And then also we wanted to provide a way for resources for Muslim young adults. So, you know, shout out to our last community check-in, um, Bilal, and, and you all were there. Um, yes we brought on a um, Muslim therapist, well, counselor, and she was able to, you know, give us insight in regards of like mental health and just mental health in like the pro pro prophetic way. And so it was really resourceful and it, it was really beneficial in regards of that check-in. So um, that's, that's, you know, two of the things. And then also I can't forget, we do spotlights. We do community spotlights um, mm -hmm. on our Instagram live. So we try to um, really highlight, that's one thing, that's one of our goals as Muslim Culture Con is we want to highlight the um, young adults. We want to highlight Muslim young adults that are doing community mm -hmm. work, that are doing just, you know, beautiful work in the community and outside of the community. And we want to highlight that. We want to highlight their skills. We want to highlight, you know, what they're mm -hmm. doing in, the, in their careers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we've been um community spotlights on Instagram. Mm -hmm. so, uh, it's absolutely necessary. You know, we have to amplify the voices right. of young Muslims uh, in America. Um, mm -hmm. And our presence has to be, you know, known. And, you know, we have to see who's who in our, our community because there's a lot of dope people doing amazing things. So, alhamdulillah, continue to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> alhamdulillah. Bilal, you tapping in? I know. Yeah. Right? No. Like, uh, <laughs> Come on, a lot of stuff. <laughs> so, so with that, well, you know, with that being said, we talked about the success of um, Muslim Culture Con, its infancy, how it got started. Now, I want to shift into talking about the big, the big event, which um, <clears throat> we're planning for. The big event, uh, which alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm glad to be part of MCC now myself uh, as a member and as a participant um, in the planning process for the retreat on in the fundraising side of it uh, you, you heard it right the fundraising side because we need money so we're going to talk, sure. <laughs> talk a little bit about that but let's backtrack let's talk about the retreat that's coming up in october in the lone star state of 
Dallas, Texas, the city will be. Yes. So let's talk about that a little bit. Let's talk about the retreat. Yes, yes. No. What inspired you to do this retreat? What's right. going down? Who's going to be there? What's the objective? We want to know all the deets. <laughs> Hold on, not too many details. All right, right, right. 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 Just too much juice. Just enough juice. Just enough juice to get to keep to keep the people uh, excited. I look. I'll let Aisha go first since she's a part of our programming. <laughs> Um, well, as y'all can see in my background, our, I'm pointing the wrong way, <laughs> our uh, theme is it's destined for prosperity using our legacy to cultivate a garden of excellence. Um, so yes, I am on the programming team, not to give too much away, but we're definitely trying to make it um, a discussion. We were trying to make it where people will have tools that they can take back to their communities. Um, we're trying to bring in some inshallah some big names um or you know people who are well known so you know everyone get excited about it um there's also a lot of other activities that are not so it's not just going to be a bunch of lectures everyone <laughs> we have a bunch of activities to get people uh you know there's outdoor activities indoor activities um so inshallah hope everyone gets excited about that and I will also move my head down a little bit. Y'all can see, like they, the brother said, it's Dallas, Texas. It's October 25th to 27th. And registration is now open. <laughs> so you can't tell us all everything, right? But can you right. tell us what can people expect activity-wise? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, um, I would like to say, like, what our objectives are, right, for the retreat. Um, a lot. We we really hope to obtain from this retreat, right? It's first community engagement, you know, really to get the engagement going amongst Muslim young adults. And then also um to really implement leadership, leadership and self-development. Um, we really want people to take a moment, you know, out of like, you know, we we constantly going. We're constantly going, we're constantly on, on a hustle and bustle life. So, you know, to really take a step back. And really immerse yourself in this environment, this retreat environment. That's why we didn't do conference. We did retreat because, you know, we really want to take this experience of coming together in a different environment, in a natural, uh, what is it, a natural setting. And then also, you know, like I said, you're outside from the outside, you know, of like uh, city life and all of that. So um, a lot of self-development and also, of course, Islamic understanding. So a couple of our sessions are geared towards, you know, um, our Islamic growth. Um, also, the biggest thing is to know about MCC, you know, to really get to know what Muslim Culture Khan is and what we're doing and what we're wanting to offer to Muslim young adults. Um, that's really one of the big, big things. And then um, another thing that I see, a plus, alhamdulillah, oh, shout out, that's the team. That's the team. <laughs> so um, another thing that we really want um, out of this retreat too is networking. You know, we really want um, to formulate sisterhood, brotherhood, um, even families, you know what I'm saying? Never know, you know, you might find your spouse, you know, <laughs> but alhamdulillah, we really want to create a sense of community um, amongst Muslim young adults on a national standpoint. Um, and so that's what I look forward to with the retreat is, is really um, strengthening our, our unity amongst all of us, you know, um, even if there's a moment in the retreat where we take out where we take and we like discuss like what are the needs of of Muslim young adults like what what are what is the things that are going on in our community and how can we how can we fix that how can we find solutions um, regarding that so you know creating that space too to have that um, vulnerability and that opportunity you know to to have those discussions so <laughs> all right uh, alhamdulillah I think this what is, what this... ages are um is the target for this retreat. All right, don't beat me up. Okay. <laughs> the, the age group that the target that we're looking at is 18 to 35. Um, but hold on. From 35 to, left. What you I say? missed it by two years. I, I got three, I got three years left. But hold on, wait, wait. But three years sooner. 35 to 40, though, we want to leave that opportunity for volunteers. So if you would love to volunteer, um, if you would love to help us in regards of the things that we got going on that weekend, we're accepting volu volunteers as well. Okay. 
<laughs> that's good too like a big brother big sister yeah, yeah. <laughs> not leave me all out you know what i'm saying we, okay okay that's cool cool <laughs> Alhamdulillah. all right but anything yes. else where do you guys see where do you see um mcc in the next five to ten years <laughs> look at me over there thinking he's like yeah I was like, no because so i've 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 had this thought process or like I've thought about this before, right? Like where I see MCC and I see it, you know, in the the ranks of like some of these other organizations that we have where, you know, folks say MCC and they already know, right? Like when people say ISNA, you already know what's happening, right? When people say, you know, like all these like mass, you know, mana, you know, like, so when I hear like for me, five, 10 years down the road, when folks say MCC, because again, like I came in kind of like after the fact, right? Jada, Aisha, Zaid, they had already been having these meetings. And so by the time I came along, you know, I was joining and on this group of eight who came together with this idea that has now spanned, a, like I'll say across the country, but I'll also even say like internationally because I, I I spend way too much time going back home to Jamaica, right? And and you, I have folks in Jamaica asking me about MCC things like, can we come? Can we come? And I'm like, buy a ticket, get a visa, you know, like we but we can make it work, you know. So like the way I see it is like I see MCC becoming this mm -hmm. one a household name, and I see it becoming this thing where you know, five, ten, twenty years down the road, our kids, you know, I don't know, grandkids, you know folks marry young you know kids and grandkids are also in mcc and, and they're talking about it as as something you know like it's, it's one of those institutions that's now like a, a foundation in, not a foundation a pillar in our community mashallah i love that and inshallah you guys will pass that baton on to the generation that's under you absolutely absolutely yeah i have another question um for those who are not in the emam wd muhammad network are they, can they come as well to the conference? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and, and that's the thing too, even um our board, individuals that are on a board are, mm -hmm. not everyone is from Iman Warfare Muhammad's community. Um, And I think what Jamil and I, I think Aisha, you, you honed in on it too, is really about being around like-minded individuals. Um, And that's what MCC is trying to create too. It's just that, cultivation of us being like-minded and on the same mission and vision for Islam here in America um, and, wh and what right. that looks like, you know, and, and how can we carry that that legacy, right? Um, and just the beauty of it, you know, it, it's time for us to be out in the forefront. Um, and so in order to do that, we have to work together as a collective. Um, and so alhamdulillah, we, we're alhamdulillah. accepting, you know, all individuals. That's good. Alhamdulillah. It seems like the elders have taken on to you guys as well. Very receptive. Um, and that's a good thing too. Alhamdulillah. Um, Alhamdulillah. May Allah continue to bless you guys and everything that you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And I encourage all the young adults to get involved with MCC. They're doing amazing things and support. Yes, yes. Show up in Texas in October. Register okay. now. Okay. <laughs> also, also, also if, you, if you can't come because you're over the limit, Consider, consider donating, consider yes. helping, mm -hmm. consider helping some offset costs. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about that before we leave about how people can donate and sponsor? Yes. Mm -hmm. Tell them yeah. Jada and inshallah send it to me so I can put it in the, the comments. Mm -hmm. But also you can tell people now if they want to donate to the mission, let us know. Yes, no, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I think Bilal, if you dropped it um, in the chat, but you can go to our website um, and you can also donate in, in that way. And then also, we also currently have a launch good that's open. So if you want to support, you know, every dollar counts. It doesn't matter if it's small, big, large. Alhamdulillah, we take all the coins. <laughs> but Alhamdulillah, we, yes, we definitely in need of funds. Um, even if you know of any um, businesses or institutions or organizations that can be a sponsor. Um, we're looking, we're currently looking for sponsors as well. Um, if you could just email us at MuslimCultureCon at gmail.com um, and we can, you know, further have that conversation in regards of sponsorships and then also, you know, donations as well. Um, 
from Diddy Tell us a little bit about this event coming up. Oh, she don't popped up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> okay. Like, look, Bilal, let them know, know what's going on with that one. <laughs> <laughs> this is the uh, save the date for the virtual fundraising telethon, um, cultivating legacy and leadership. This is Muslim culture, culture cons um, virtual telethon. This will be live on New Freedom Exchange. Uh, myself, uh, brother Dean, and sister Marsha Muhammad um, will be doing uh, Saturday, June twenty second at seven p.m. We have uh, special guest speakers. So it'll be special performers. We will be doing a free giveaway raffle ticket for the retreat. Okay. Nice. One blessed out. So Saturday, right. June twenty second at seven Eastern, will be live on New Freedom Exchange on our platform, which is on YouTube and Facebook. And mm-hmm. more information forthcoming about some of the surprise guest speakers, etc. How long is the telephone going to be? To nine o'clock. We're going two hours strong. So okay, two say, hours strong. Bismillah. A lot, but no, it's gonna be a full. It's gonna be a full program, so you <laughs> will encourage everyone to stay nice. as long as they can. So, okay. You know, um, it's gonna be very engaging speakers. We're gonna have some engaging performers, and don't forget the raffle. So you want to stay around for the raffle because that will be at the end. Okay. Cool. You yeah. guys tune in, inshallah, on YouTube, Facebook. New Freedom Exchange is going down. Support Muslim Culture Con, inshallah. inshallah. All right, y'all. Any last words? Um, anything? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I uh, do just a couple of things. Um, early bird registration is open. So uh, it ends July 5th. I know, you know, we last minute in the people. So I just want to put that out there. July 5th, it does end. It's only 180, you all, 180. For the weekend, that's the singles ticket. And then also catch this, we have a couples ticket. And it's not just for like, I know when people see couples, they're like, oh, do I have to be my spouse and get the couple ticket? No, you can grab a friend and say, hey, look, do you want to split this 300? Okay, that's 150 for you and 150 for me. Okay, bam. Well, that's they, right. So, that's yeah. right. Okay. So, cool. Yes, okay. and that, so that ends July um 5th. And then um, also, I want to just make a challenge. You know what I'm saying? I love making challenges. Okay. I'm very action, hands on. So I okay. challenge anybody that's watching this or, you know, sharing this or, or will watch it, inshallah. Yes. I really challenge um, Muslim young adults, if you're watching, to really step out of your comfort zone, to join MCC, to join us at our retreat, inshallah, October 25th to the 27th. Um, and to really catch this memorable experience, like we're making history, like this has not been done in our community um, in a long time. And so this is going to be a, a memorable experience, a beautiful experience of just coming together, networking and being in that environment, that space with other Muslims. Um, and so inshallah, yes, yeah, step out your comfort zone, because I know some people like, eh, I don't know, but, you know, try it, you know, see. And then after you come from the retreat. We get your feedback and then we're like, oh, okay, yes. You know, they're like, oh, I really enjoyed it. You know, so, uh, <laughs> so yeah. look up them flight tickets. Don't be afraid. <laughs> okay, okay. Yes. And then also group travel rate, like that's available yes. too. I'm, I'm trying to hook people up with that too. So, okay. You have- Send more people coming out of like a city, certain city, or maybe like cities that are next to each other. Y'all could like come out of one air uh, airport. Um, we could put together um group travel rates, inshallah. So yeah. Allah. yeah. Sounds yeah. great. Yeah. Allah. Thank you so much. <laughs> Any last words, Aisha, Jamil, Palau? Oh. <laughs> um, in addition to what Jada said about emailing Muslim Culture Con directly. If anyone is interested in volunteering, you can email me, um, volunteer services coordinator at MuslimCultureCon.com. We just got our emails. I was like, wait, hold on. What's my email? <laughs> but inshallah, you guys can email me directly. Um, or, or if you end up emailing MuslimCultureCon, just say that you're interested in volunteering. And inshallah, I will follow up with you. Inshallah. All right, alhamdulillah. May Allah continue to bless you guys. You guys are doing dope things. Please support MCC and their upcoming retreat in October. And we will put everything in the comments so you guys can go back to the live and check to see how to register. 
and how to donate, inshallah. <laughs> it's been real, y'all, inshallah. Um, until next time. All yeah. right. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Well, <laughs> alaikum salam. Alaikum salam.